Okay. Okay. Oh my goodness. Here's a video I didn't think that I would um, be shooting anytime soon. First of all, welcome to our channel. If you're new here, then subscribe. Yeah, we try and post new videos every week. This video is going to be a little bit different to our usual stuff. It's just going to get a little bit deep, a little bit personal. If that's not what you're about, then off you go. But if you do want to stick around and listen to my story, then please get comfortable. I want to start off first of all by saying this isn't a normal like coming out story. I feel like, I mean, what is a normal coming out story? I don't think there is one. Um, every story is so different. Um, and here's, here's mine. Um, my family growing up, okay, not even my family, me growing up, I was Muslim. I was uh, raised in a Muslim home. Um, I'm from the UK, my parents are from Pakistan. They immigrated to the UK um, before I was born. I don't know why I'm like nervous. This is, this is a strange, this is strange. I feel like talking in front of the camera is like easy, but this is really difficult. Okay, I remember growing up, my first like memory of like gay, it, when I was growing up, I remember being in school, in primary school, elementary school, preschool, if someone knows what that is on this side of the pond, then please let me know. Maybe I was like five years old or something. And I remember being like, Oh, I like Barbie dolls, and my favorite color is pink. My favorite color is pink, and all my friends are girls. I think I'm supposed to be a girl. I think I'm supposed to be a female. And I kept thinking this in my mind. I was like, oh, I think I'm just in the wrong body. Because I had no idea. I had no education on the LGBTQ world. So yeah, I was kind of confused. I had only female friends. Um, I have a huge like extended family and I just used to hang out with like my female cousins. Um, the male cousins would always make fun of me. You know, it was weird, it was weird, it was a weird childhood. People were weird, but I was just like, I like pink and, my, and I like Barbies and um, my favorite thing on the planet is that like twirly thing, the twirly fairy thingy. That's my favorite thing on the planet. No one really questioned it. My mum just bought me these things. Until I got to a certain age where I, they, it just all stopped because they were like, oh, you're um, a grown boy now, so you have to play with boys' toys. All my Barbies. Rest in peace. Fast forward to the future a little bit. I'm in high school. I remember realizing when I was gay to myself, it was not really a shock. It wasn't like, oh. I was in, I mean, <laughs> obviously in PE. <laughs> oh my God, this is so weird to say. One of the PE teachers at school. Oh my God, he is a babe. But I was 11, so like, that's kind of weird. I remember telling a friend of mine when I was 11 years old, I thought this teacher was so handsome. That was probably the first person I came out to, but it was, it was so casual. I was like, oh yeah, he's babe. And then she just was like, yeah, he is a babe. Good for you. Slowly after that, people started becoming very aware of the fact that I was so different because I was so flamboyant and I was so extra and um but like so unapologetically so just so like oh I'm gonna wear like a crazy colored scarf today to school and I don't care if anyone says I'm not allowed because I'm just gonna do it anyway I was so open and I was so proud maybe a little bit obnoxious about it but I mean sometimes you just have to be because if you aren't then People will just walk all over you. I didn't want people to walk all over me and I didn't let them. I went through my whole high school years out, so proud, so, with a great friendship group around me. Went to some really fun parties and I kissed some boys and it was just a really, really chill time. But I was living this like double, double life because I was doing that at school and with my school friends. But then I was fully, fully lying to my family when I'd go to like parties or something and get my mum to drop me off at my friend Paul's house. But then I'd walk to like my friend Rachel's house because, you know, Rachel was a babe. Because I wasn't allowed female friends. Oh, I should have mentioned that. I wasn't allowed to have female friends by this point, you know, because that whole Muslim lifestyle growing up is just like boys are friends with boys and girls are friends with girls. No! Every day after school until I think maybe I was like, 13, I would go to like Islamic school right after high school and like learn about the Quran and like the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad and I kind of like switched off from that. I refused to go again. I just kind of like, kind of like phased out of that, of going. 
Fast forward to being 15 years old, I living like a double life became so much for me. Bear in mind that my family was fasting every month of Ramadan, going to Friday prayer, and it was the holidays, I'd like make up an excuse, like, oh, I'm really sick, or like there's a really important exam coming up that I have to study for. Okay, so I was 15 years old and I just felt so much pressure. Like, I don't want to be living this double life anymore. It's so insane. It's so insane to me. In terms of me coming out to my family, I knew it was something that I needed to do to just be myself all the time. That person that I was with my friends outside of like the house, I wanted to be that person like all of the time. I was so sad and so tired and and just lying, it was just too much. It was way too much for me. I'm sweating, oh my God. So it was a Friday. <laughs> I remember it so well. I just decided that day, I was like, this is the day that I have to do, I have to do it. Me and my mum were not on good terms at the time. I just kept thinking how like, you don't know who I am. If you don't know who I am, I want to tell you. And so I decided to write a note and leave it in the kitchen when I got home from school. I packed bags. I packed my bags, <laughs> fuck. I packed bags because I expected to be kicked out of the house. I fully expected to be kicked out of the house. I was going against the whole belief system of my parents, the whole belief system of, of our community, in a sense, like, letting them down. So I was ready to go, I was packed. Um, and I went to my friend Rachel's house. She was a saver in grace at the time. My mum was out, like, driving the car, looking for me because I'd run away from home, which is wild to think about. Oh, so I turned my phone off, I just wasn't communicating, I just needed time to like process the fact that now she knew, now everything's gonna change, everything's automatically going to change regardless of how I, how anything goes now. I didn't really have much more of a plan past that weekend. My mum is, I think, maybe Inspector Gadget. She um, found Rachel's number from like redial on the house phone. I'm just an amateur maybe. She must have just been ringing everyone in the call history being like, have you seen my son? Have you seen my son? Have you seen my son? Rachel answered the phone and then it was my mum and then she was like, come home. No emotion. I don't think I can if I can't be myself. If you don't accept me, I don't know if, but how the hell do I know? I was 15 years old. So I was like, don't, no, I cannot do this. But I ended up going home that night. We didn't talk the whole weekend until Sunday. My mum and my oldest brother in the room and we were talking about it for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on end. It was not really much of a conclusion. I didn't really know what I was expecting. Like I mentioned, my mum is Muslim, has her faith, and I don't have that faith. And then our relationship kind of spiraled a little bit. We weren't close for about two years. Yeah, she knew, and uh, it was kind of an evolution of the both of us then learning about the way that the other functioned. Well, personally, me and my mother, and my dad, it's just a different story, and we don't have a close relationship. Let's leave it at that. My mum and I, we kind of like had this back and forth for a few years where we were really getting to know each other again, like properly. I don't think I was as patient with her as I could have been, and I don't think she was as patient with me as she should have been either. We clashed a lot of the time. I don't think it was until I moved out of the house, I went and moved to uni, when we really started to bond over different aspects of our lives that neither of us knew about, but were interested in enough to, and mature enough to understand too. It was a really long process. It's not fully even finished yet, is now at the age of 26, my mum knows I'm gay, has known for the last 11 years. She's amazing, um, but it's something we still don't openly talk about, which is kind of sad. It's an uncomfortable topic for her, I think, still. She knows, she knows about Matthew. She knows I live here. She knows about my life. She knows I have tattoos. Yeah, it's been a journey. <laughs> So there's not really an end, an end to the story, like, hey, everything's like peachy keen, everything's amazing, yay. Mum's um, coming to our wedding. There's no wedding, there's no wedding. She's so open-minded. She has had the last 11 years to, to be so. Me coming out to her, I think, helped me be more me. But I think me coming out to her also helped her open her mind, generally, to the world and uh, not see it in black and white because it is full of so much color. So yeah, that's my story. I feel like 
I went on a bit of a tangent there. I feel like maybe I didn't hit all of the points. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section or shoot me a DM on Instagram. Um, all my information will be down below. Wow, that was intense. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to our channel. Matt is going to be filming his coming out story. We'll hopefully be uploading that next week too. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Love you.